guests may be seated. I thank co-pastor for giving me this opportunity for worship. You know, it's something being a singer. I tell you, I've been singing since I was seven years old. But it makes a difference when you know who you're singing about. And sometimes, you know, folks don't understand, but when you hear people, mm, that's a way of worship. Because I'm talking to God, I'm not talking to you. Mm, mm, mm. Amen. Oh my. All right. <coughs> It's not about me. It's not about you. It's about God. Are you a woman of worship? Yes. I'm asking that question tonight for somebody. I'm coming from Matthew 15, 21 to 28. Now I have the NIV version. I know some of you have some other versions, so instead of us all sounding like the Tower of Babel, I'm just going to read my version. If we can stand. Matthew 15, 21 through 28. Leaving that place, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. A Canaanite woman from the vicinity came to him crying out, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is demon possessed and suffering terribly. Jesus did not answer a word. So the disciples came to him and urged him, send her away, for she keeps crying out after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. The woman came and knelt before him. Lord, help me, she said. He replied, it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. Yes, it is, Lord, she said. Even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus said to her, woman, you have great faith. Your request is granted. And her daughter was healed at that moment. You may be seated. It's not about me. It's not about you. It's about God. Are you a woman of worship? The Apostle Paul defines Christian worship as a worship that is controlled by the Holy Spirit. And this worship is a worship of rejoicing. It is no longer a matter of duty. It is a desire. To worship by the Spirit of God is not something that is cold or harsh or even formal. It is warm, it's loving, it's free. You know, you're free. When you're worshiping, you're being free here. Since the Holy Spirit is in us, there must be something of the love of God in us. Okay? As we worship God more and more by the Spirit, we become less and less dependent on means. What do I mean by that? People, preachers, churches, okay? Who we worship in the Spirit, I'm sorry, who we worship in the Spirit, Realize it that we are in the presence of God. Are you a woman of worship? Look at a woman and say, are you a woman of worship? Amen. Praise team didn't sing my song today. Apostle didn't preach what I wanted to hear today. Brother Chad didn't talk to me today. I do all this cooking and they don't do, they don't say nothing about you know, we evaluate the worship of others. We look at other people when we're supposed to be worshiping God. And you see it. You know, you just have those people that's just there. Yeah, you're talking real good. Talking real good. <laughs> Watching what's going on. We, we tend to attract other people instead of, you know, worshiping God. We believe that our importance is more valuable than his presence. Hello? We no longer stand in awe of his glory because we seem to believe we comprehend all that there is to know about him. We think we know everything. Our greatest concern is making people comfortable. Stop it! Stop making people comfortable! They better move! Yes, I'm going to wave my hand. You know, yeah, I might move around. Hey, you better get out of the way. I'm not here to make you comfortable. 
And you know, the truth should be told, we all should be knocking each other out like we are playing twist. That's how it's supposed to be. Amen, amen, amen. It's not about you. It's not about me. It's about God. Here's the problem. Worship is not about getting anything. It's about giving everything to God. But unfortunately, a lot of us have this, what have you done for me, lady, attitude. I, I, it's always I. It's all about me. I mean, I'm not talking about anybody here, you know, but I know some other churches, you know, that I've gone to where they've had that issue. You know, the size of the, the ministries, you know, how big the building is and how popular the pastor is. And trying to make people happy. I stopped doing that a long time ago. I, you know, now, it's not easy getting up here singing, but my whole mind frame changed. I used to worry about who was clapping or who was sitting or who, who wasn't doing nothing. I don't care anymore. I'm here to do my job. Now, if I bless you, so be it. But you, I cannot come here to pump you up. You're supposed to be in your own worship. Okay? You're supposed to be in your own worship. And I will still worship God whether you stand up for me, whether you, whether you clap or not. It's about God. It is not about you. It is not about me. All right. So now we're going to talk about the text here. In Matthew 15, we find a Canaanite woman. She's not even a Jew who came to Jesus in her need and she was rebuffed, meaning she was rejected abruptly. Okay? Notice that she began to worship. The Bible says that she came and worshiped him. If you are not a woman of worship, you're going to learn today. Alright? Now, I'm going to give you three wonderful benefits of worship if it's not, you know, in your repertoire. One, worship aids us in experiencing the reality of the presence of God. Again, worship aids us in experiencing the reality of the presence of God. Note that when she came to Jesus, she came to him. He didn't come to her. When it appeared not to be answered, the Bible says that she came and worshipped him. It's insinuated that she drew near to him. She fell down to his feet and worshipped him. This Canaanite woman was not raised as a Jew. She probably did not know the requirements of the law of Moses. But however, she had a need. Her daughter was in trouble. She knew that this man was coming, and she knew that this man could do something for her. All right? She knew he could do marvelous things. So she came hoping. She represented her, she came and presented her request and called him the son of David. There were even Jews who knew of the Messiah, but they didn't realize it was David. But this woman knew, or at least she had that faith. Amen. There was something that happened when she talked to him. And I believe she began to realize that there was more to him than just a man. I believe that she thought that he was God. Because she, she began to worship. As she worshiped, she drew close to him. And she realized she was in the presence of God. So, you know, when you're in worship, you're in the presence. You're in the presence. If we truly want to sense the presence of God, people, we have to worship Him. Okay? That's the only way. So, one, worship aids us in experiencing the reality of the presence. Two, worship aids us by elevating us above the realm of our problems. How many times do we drag ourselves to church? Amen. Drag ourselves through worship. Oh, my God. Drag through the benediction. Then got the nerve to say, well, I ain't learned nothing today, Pastor. I ain't do nothing in church today. <laughs> well, what did you put into it? Came to church like you were eating onions? Some sour apples? <laughs> the devil. 
Bible. But she was in the presence of the Lord. She began to worship him. Do you think she was thinking about her daughter when she was worshiping him? No. No. She wasn't thinking about her problem. All she knew, God. I mean, you, I mean can you try to imagine it? Lord, hallelujah. Oh. I lost my job. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Oh, I'm hurting, Lord. Huh? Not even possible. Not even. You can't do both. You can't worship if you're focused on your problems. Amen. Worship is an action of faith. It's easy when things are going well. Worship requires emotion, 
We begin to worship when we allow God to touch our hearts and our mind. Adoration. We begin to worship when we do more than just invite him in, yes. but we stop to adore him. Yes. With worship also, there's repentance. Because again, remember, we understand what it means to repent for our sin. All right? And then there's thanksgiving. We begin to worship when we return our very best in God by giving thanks. And you can do that again however you may. All right? We praise God for what he has done. But we worship him for who he is. So just remember that. All right, beloved? Uh, thank you. So worship is so important. Are you a woman of worship? Are you really? And if you're not, you need to get yourself out of that funk. Because God has brought you from a mighty long way. He may not have done things for you that he's done for others. But you still can see. You woke up. Hallelujah. There's a lot of things that we take for granted. Hallelujah. But a lot of us, you know, a lot of times we get selfish. And we wonder about who, what they have and who this, you know. We can't do that. I even remember somebody told me, oh, I wish I could hit that note like you. I said, hit your own note. Don't worry about what I'm doing. You can't be me. But I know God has blessed you with your own note. Because you best believe I tried to hit some Karen Clark and it wasn't Karen Clark. <laughs> I learned how to stay in my own lane. But when it comes to worship, and I'm telling you, it, it took me a minute to get there because again, I love God. But as I began to go higher and higher, I found just some days I could be in the kitchen and all of a sudden I just start crying and saying, thank you, Lord. And just singing to myself. Me and the roaches, we all together. <laughs> Not even fighting with them no more. <laughs> just don't crawl on me while I'm sleep.